You don't know Jack about Jack. It's Jack Lucas on today's Motivated Moments of History. <laughs> His first name is really Jacqueline, but he'd probably turn Lee your ignorant ass in the face if you call him that. He went by Jack because that's not a girl's name. He was born in a very small town in North Carolina. He was hyper and rather unruly, and when his dad died when he was 11, he became out of control. So much so, his mother enrolled him in a military school. That's where he developed his immense pride and sense of duty to country. When the Japanese decided to flex their raisin-sized ball sacks for Pearl Harbor, Jack got pissed off and decided to do something about it. At 13, while all the other kids were talking about Ninja Turtles and making skid marks in their underwear, Jack ran away from the boarding school and walked into a Marine Corps recruiting office. He lied about his age, he forged his mother's name on a signature, and then he joined an anger herd of pissed off killing machines known as the Leathernecks at the United States Marine Corps! He graduated boot camp when he was 14 but was stationed at Paris Island and assigned as a day laborer where he just mowed grass and swept motor pools. Pissed off about his inability to go whack some Japanese, he went AWOL from there, hopped on a vessel, and ended up in Pearl Harbor. There he was found, and it became known that he wasn't supposed to be there, so they kept him in Hawaii doing the same shit he was doing in Paris Island. This pissed him off even more. So he gathered a few of his belongings, found a ship going to war, and he hid on it as a stowaway. He survived off of what few crumbs and thrown away food he could find. And when he arrived at Iwo Jima, he didn't even have a weapon, so he stormed the beach only with his hands. And that was until he could recover a rifle off a dead marine. And then he joined the infantry squad and begun to fulfill his life calling by slaying some motherfucking bodies. <laughs> During the second day of combat, while he was in a fighting position with a handful of other marines, he was engaged in direct combat. After killing uh, one Japanese troop, his weapon started to jam. When he ducked down to look at his weapon and try to fix it, he noticed a grenade was laying right beside him. Then another one popped right on his position as well. Without hesitation, he gathered the grenades together and laid on top of them, absorbing the blast. This was supposed to kill him, but it didn't. Not only did he survive, he made a full recovery. He laid on top of not one, but two grenades, absorbed every ounce of the blast. You know, it had shrapnel in his stomach, intestines, and ball sacks, and all that stuff. And he made a full recovery. I can trip and fall on a firecracker and I'll be a goner. This dude snuggled up the two freaking grenades and lived. For this heroic action, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. More importantly, it established him as a death-defying, grenade-absorbing, X-Man mutant Marine Corps badass. He was awarded the Medal of Honor at 17. After making a full recovery, he returned to his high school with the medal around his neck, slammed his dick on the principal's desk, slapped the varsity quarterback right in the face, and then proceeded to get the digits of every cheerleader on the squad. He went on to be married four times. His second wife tried to hire a hitman to kill him, but she didn't get the memo that he was fucking impervious to dying. At age 40, after spending the last 20 years marrying chicks, smashing poon, and dodging a murderous wife, he was scared of heights and it pissed him off. Usually when someone wants to overcome a fear of heights, they'll climb a ladder, ride an elevator, or maybe stand on a bridge. Not Jack. He conquered his fear of heights by joining the 82nd Airborne. During a parachuting training event, his main chute failed to open. After pulling his reserve chute cord, that failed to open too. But instead of falling to his death, he turned into a majestic bald eagle and soared gracefully to the ground where he landed. And then walked away. I mean, the dude fell from a plane. To the ground. No parachute. Walked away. Plane. To the ground. No parachute. He walked away. Maybe you're not understanding me. Like, his parachute didn't work when he left the door to the airplane. Like, way up in the sky. Next to the clouds. To the ground. Got up and walked away. Like, dude. I sprained my ankle this morning trying to get out of bed. And this guy fell from a plane. A big freaking metal vehicle hovering above the sky 3,500 feet above the planet and landed on the ground and walked away plane sky ground walked away like plane to the sky to the you get it he survived two grenades a solicitation for murder attempt a fall from a damn aircraft 
and live through all of it. He can't die. But he died of cancer in 2008. He's buried at the Highland Cemetery in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Lot 47, Section 32. And that, kids, is your Motivated Moments in History! <laughs> From a plane, to the sky, to the ground, he walked away. Plane, sky, ground. Someone's got to explain this to me.